Hi developers and welcome to Wix Engineering Tech Talks show. Today we're going to talk about what it supports in adapters, what is it good for and why we need this. My name is Afriya Tal and I'm working at Wix.com for the last couple of years. Imagine this, you're working on a massive project and the bigger it gets, the slower your progress is. Sound familiar? Well, those problems derive from lack of architecture or just not implementing it correctly. Today we will see one possible solution for that problem, which is Pots and Adapters architecture. And if you are programmers, and it doesn't matter what type of programming language you're using, then Pots and Adapters is a really good tool to have. And I'm sure that if we will take one issue that you are facing today, back to the time when you were students, you would probably solve it. So if the problem is not writing code that works, then what is the problem? The problem is writing code that's easy to modify. And we need to understand that our code will change. And it can be one of our, the team members that change our code. And it can be because of the requirements that keep on changing and reconstruct our project. And it can be because of the API changes or bugs that we create and fix on later. It should be easy to add feature to your code and even more importantly, easy to remove feature from your code. In order to do so, we're gonna use some architecture. And we have a variety of architecture. We have pot and adapters, onion, clean, layered, three tier architecture, and many more that can help us to solve that issue. But today we're gonna focus only in pot and adapters architecture. So first, let's understand a couple of terms. Every application has its own business logic and technical details. We have the business logic, which is the logic of our application. If the user does this, then do that. And we have the technical details, which are the tools that help us to implement the business logic. For example, if we like to record some data, we can use MySQL or SQLite. Or if we like to know the user location, we can use a GPS or Wi-Fi. And all of those are the technical details that help me to fulfill my business logic. So ports and adapters evolved from hexagonal architecture that Alistair Cockburn wrote in the mid 90s. His motivation was driven from the same scaling issues that we talked about. And he understood that the code of the technical detail should not be inside the code of our business logic. So he decoupled them. He realized that every application, small or big, has its business logic in the inside and the technical details in the outside. Later on, in 2005, he found the missing puzzle he had, which was the port. The port is an interface, as you know it from Java, for example. It should be written in the business logic language and it should not contain any information about your technical details. Let's say if you have a method called add employee to the database, then it should be called add employee without specifying the technical details. The business logic depends on it. And we have the adapter, which is the one that implements the ports. It knows all the little details about your external system and it must not contain any business logic inside of it. That's why it has to be a very thin layer and should function as a simple delegator. Okay guys, so that was too much of abstraction. So let's see some code example. In this example, we have a tic-tac-toe game that has this crazy business logic and we have a UI which is an external system that we don't wish to be depend on. So here we have all the business logic and right away we can see that the port is part of my business logic. We have here the tic-tac-toe API, which is the port. And here we have this method think and if something happened, if the user click on that cell, then the port API set the next move to some row and some column or tell the world that we won or tell the world that we lost. And here you can see the port, which is an interface, the business logic API to the external world. Up until now, we didn't know how the UI was implemented. It could have been REST communication. And now we can see the external dependencies. We can see that it used Swing and we can see how we delegate our methods. We work with all kinds of third parties application inside our project and sometimes we're gonna have to upgrade them or replace them. 
due to some uh, uh, requirements or some budget issues. When we do so, we'll first try to explore our code and to see where is the third-party application, library or API that we're using inside our code. And sometimes we can find it in so many files just spread all over our system. And it's hard to tell what will happen if we'll try to replace them and how will it affect our system. In the worst scenario, we may even decide that it's simpler to rewrite our project. So we'll have to go to our manager and tell him that due to poor decision, our code is not flexible enough, is not soft enough for that modification. So how can ports and adapters help me with that? How's the adapter help us out? The adapter prevents external dependencies leaking into the code because they exist only in the adapter very thin layer. And by that, it's creating an anti-corruption layer. And they are replaceable. All you have to do is to implement the interface, the port, and replace that one file in your system. We can see in the UML that the business logic depends on the port, but not on the technical details. The technical details is dependent on our system. So we can replace the technical detail like a plugin to our system. And it's independently deployed and independently compiled. Okay guys, so have a minute and let's see if you can find the code violation. We have here a method called spin the roll 8 that gets a user bet number, random some number, and check if the user won. If the user won, then its system print out the user won, or if it's lost, then its system print out the user lost. Spoiler alert, I'm gonna give you the answer, so pause me if you like. The code violation is the system print out mixed inside our business logic. So let's fix that. Now everything looks good. In the method play user bet for, we have only the business logic that knows that we should notify the user, but don't know how we do that, thanks to the interface name user notifications. In some elsewhere, we hold the technical details in the adapter user notification UI that hold the detail of how we communicate the notification to the user. In that case, it's simply by system print out. And by that, we separate the technical details from the business logic. There are two takeaways that I would like you to take from this video. The first one is keep the business logic clean. Don't put any kind of external dependencies inside your business logic. And the second one is keep the adapter thin. Don't put any kind of business logic inside your adapter because once you replace your adapter, then you would probably lose that business logic. Feel free to leave a comment below if you have any questions. Be safe and scale your software. Thank you for watching.